Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's episode of Flick News. I'm Isola here with Flick Direct, and if you're new here, this is just a segment where I give you some of the information that has been released in the entertainment field. So primarily movies, but sometimes I'll mix in a little bit of, I don't know, cartoons, TV, you name it, I'll, I'll talk about it. Anyway, grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and let's get this started. First, let's start with Borderlands. I think it was last week or the week before I had told you the box office numbers and how much of a flop it was. I think the last of the Rotten Tomatoes was 7%. I honestly haven't gone back to check it, but from what I've heard, it's gone up a little bit more, but not too much. Well, because of its failure, I guess you would say, it's already got a release date for streaming. Uh, which is actually the 29th. So pretty much 30 days after it was released. Um, now, the funny thing is, is that the streaming services are more likely to be where you can rent or buy. So that means Amazon Prime, things of that nature, which I find really funny because from my perspective, it was a complete failure and they're still asking you to pay to watch it. I'm not really understanding that, but you know, I guess they've got to make their money any which way. But if you're already paying for a streaming service, they should just upload it to one of them and allow us to watch it without having to pay more if you really want to. And I'd say, uh, I guess if you're not a fan of Borderlands at all, meaning you've never seen it before, you know, maybe give it a watch. I don't know. Maybe it's like the Halo series where people liked it and they knew nothing about Halo. They just thought it was fun CGI prettiness and lots of explosions. I, I really don't know. Borderlands has been rated the worst game adaptation that's out there, which is saying a lot because there have been, there have been a few, uh, there have been a lot that just aren't great. I mean, us fans did not rush out to go see it because we had seen far too much that deterred us from going to the theaters. And it just, it just didn't sit well with us fans. Because of that and not getting any others who don't really know much about the franchise, that's pretty much killed off any spinoffs or sequels that we might have hoped for in the future. And as I've said time and time again, this is what happens when you just completely throw out anything regarding the lore and just use character names and I don't know, maybe some of the style. They didn't even get any of the Borderland guns right. I mean, if you've played the games, you know how nuts they are. I mean, that's one of the best things, especially when you open up the chests and you just get these crazy like unicorn colored shotguns or you know, guns that don't even exist, just made up in people's heads. Now, Gearbox has been completely hush-hush about this, and it's probably because they literally just dropped the Borderlands 4 trailer, and they probably don't want to have an association with the movie right now because it did so poorly. Um, I mean, who knows? I watched the trailer. It seems pretty cool, but it's also not really giving much away. And in all honesty, Gearbox also has a little bit to make up for with um, Borderlands 3. If you play the game or look at the synopsis, you'll understand why mm, some of us mm, were not too happy with that either. So who knows? Maybe they had a lot in the say of how this movie went. And, uh, you know, that was we should have noticed from Borderlands 3 as to how it was just the just a little bit. Again, Borderlands was really a huge disappointment. And I get that Lionsgate was really trying to grab a wider audience. Those who have never played the games know nothing about it. But again, when you deviate too much from the lore, it's not even going to sit right with people who know nothing about it. You've got to make it make sense um, and at least keep something that makes it Borderlands. Yeah, you had Claptrap, but I mean, and Krieg. I like Krieg, but still, it's just lacking. 
watch and pay at your own risk, but I highly recommend just waiting until it is on a streaming service that you own or have a subscription to already because they're probably going to charge you 17 to $20 to rent it or buy it. And I don't know if you really want to spend that much money, whether it's in the theaters or not. And if studios weren't trying to break my heart enough with Borderlands tanking so bad, The Crow came out and it hit a whopping number eight in the box office. Yeah, and I'm not just saying this because I was a huge fan of the 94 movie. This is also going with uh, the, the comic as well. Um, I highly recommend you guys checking out the comic if you haven't. It's pretty gritty. It's all black and white. I mean, with a little bit of color here and there, but it's, it's definitely one to read, but not for children. So far, the crow is flapping its wings, but it is doing a nosedive to the ground like a leaf caught in a storm. It is just, whew. I'm full of analogies today, so be prepared. And that one right there is honestly giving me firefly flashbacks. Oh, poor Wash. So far, Deadpool and Wolverine and Alien Romulans are back at the top. And The Crow, again at number eight, made a whopping 4.6 million when it honestly cost them six to nine million to make. Oh, they really have a lot to make up for. Now I know what you're thinking. After the 94 movie came out, there were a lot of misses when it came to the movies that followed. But here's the thing. None of those movies tried to reboot or be sequels to the original. No, I take that back. City of Angels actually does have a connection, but it was very brief. Um, I mean, one of the characters is in City of Angels, but again, many years have passed for that character's timeline and uh, it still does well as a standalone. You honestly didn't have to have that character in there if you didn't want, but again, following comics, books, etc. Yeah. Anyway, my point being bringing those up is that the 2024 movie is the worst out of all of those in the sense of how much money it made. So it's really either a sign of the times that people aren't ready for something like this or they just did a horrible job with the reboot. But hey, uh, the audience scored this 65% on Rotten Tomatoes, so maybe my critiques are just really off. Or, as we have kind of seen in the past, maybe some people embellished the scores because they're really big fans of Bill Skarsgård. Um, I mean, I, I love him. I think that he is an amazing actor. And I don't blame the actors at all uh, with, you know, how well or poorly this movie's doing. It's always the director and the studio choices. So they're kind of stuck with whatever they have to do. In the end, whether the crow will rise from the ashes or stay grounded is up for debate. While it's not a complete flop like Borderlands, there is a good chance that the 2024 crow will likely see itself very quickly on a streaming service. But who knows, it might stay a little longer. Only time will tell. Okay, enough of my negative rants and complaining. I really shouldn't start off these episodes like that, but I figured I'd just get them out of the way, you know, just to not have any more negativity. Anyway, Jack Black and Paul Rudd are in early talks to star in a new Anaconda movie. And it's been a while since we've had one of those. The original starred Jennifer Lopez, uh, Ice Cube, John Voight, Owen Wilson. So it would only be fitting that they got, you know, some big names to star in the new one. In the original, they were part of a film crew that were going to search for a giant snake, hence the name Anaconda. But if you remember the movie, a lot bigger. So if you're afraid of snakes, just keep 
that in mind because there's going to be a lot of snakes in this one too. Reasoning why it's named Anaconda again. Now this one is supposedly to have a bunch of friends who are going through midlife crises. Yes, is that how you say it? Uh, and they want to kind of remake a movie of their youth, which means that what they've said is Jack Black will likely be a director who has not really done very well. And then Paul Rudd would be an actor who, again, not really meeting his potential or is not as big of a star as he would like to be. But no matter what, they're going to head to the rainforest and end up battling, I don't know, natural disasters, giant snakes, you know, just chaos. The brief synopsis that I've read, it really reads more like a comedy because, you know, they're all having a midlife crisis and they want to relive their youth. You have Paul Rudd and Jack Black. It's it sounds like it could be more like a Jumanji with some action and thrilling pieces in it versus a horror slash thriller type movie with a little bit of comedy sprinkled in. They might kind of sound the same, but really they could take two different turns. Lots of comedy versus a sprinkle. So I don't know. The project has been in development since early 2023 at Columbia Pictures. So obviously there are no release dates or, you know, filming progress at this time. I'm not really sure how I feel about this, but I mean, if it does take more of a comedic approach, if it's kind of like Jumanji, I can see it working, but I'm not really sure with just these two cast members being potentially announced. Because again, it's early talks. But what do you think? Do you think that these two can pull off a, more of a horror movie together? Or do you just think it's going to be banter back and forth with a lot of comedy? Let me know in the comments below. Finally, and I know this technically isn't a movie, but it is MCU related and there's lots of movies in the MCU. So I feel like I can tie it in. Um, James Spader is returning as Ultron for the new Vision series, and I am so excited. I can't even begin to tell you because I absolutely love James Spader. Phenomenal actor. Uh, he's been in so many things, and I actually just finished The Blacklist. If you haven't seen The Blacklist, ooh, ooh he's good. He, he just plays everybody like a fiddle. So like a fiddle. Paul Bettany is obviously returning as Vision, but more as the ghostly white Vision from WandaVision. I just said Vision a lot, but I mean, that's his name. The new series will follow white Vision on his quest to basically find new purpose. Now, Ultron was destroyed in Age of Ultron, so I'm not entirely sure how they're going to either bring him back or was he never truly destroyed. I mean, again, we're going to have to watch it and wait and see, but they did a really good job on WandaVision, so I'm sure that they're going to be able to tie this in really well, unless if this is going to be more of like an origin story where White Vision is going back to the memories of Vision uh, and seeing how he was created in the first place. The Vision series doesn't start production until early 2025, so we will have to wait for more information on that. But the good news is, is that uh, it was Agatha, actually I think it's Agatha all along, uh, is coming out in September. So that will kind of give us something to watch uh, while we wait for more information on the new series. Be sure to come back because you know when I get some information on it, I will definitely let you know. And with that, this concludes this week's episode of Flick News. Please be sure to like and subscribe to all of our channels so you never miss out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!